Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Docklands 2022 and the world premiere of Savage Waters. I am so happy you're here. And this joke went over pretty well last time, but probably second time it won't. Sorry you had to wait two years. But uh, thank you so much for coming. Uh, there's a number of people I want to acknowledge initially. Uh, the opening night sponsor is AC Marriott. You might have seen the beautiful building that's going up in 5th and B. And I'd like to thank uh, the representative of AC Marriott, Jonathan Parker, who is not only a member of our board, he is a three-time board president. And uh, thank you so much, Jonathan, for all you do for this organization. Uh, there are many other sponsors through the rest of the festival we will be acknowledging. You've seen some of them already. Um, but I would be remiss if I didn't acknowledge both our staff, our amazingly talented, hardworking staff that works on this festival, Mill Valley Festival, in this beautiful theater you're at, and all the other programs, CFI Education, I know I'm forgetting some of them, but everything CFI. So thank you so much to our staff, and thank you so much to our board of directors. Many people may not be, may not be aware that they are all doing this as volunteers. They're giving their time, they're giving their resources, they're giving their money, and they're doing it all because they believe in this cause. So thank you so much. Mikey Corker uh, is the director of this film, and you're gonna be meeting him shortly. It's an incredible film, and as you know, we have three different sections. And of course, this makes sense to have it as part of the great outdoors, but in uh, many respects, it could have been in any section that we have. Um, of course, this film is about nature, is about the ocean, the interconnectedness of nature and everything on this incredible planet, but it's also about faith and passion. Um, their passion, their resilience in itself, together in this film, leads us to totally unexpected uh, elements that you will see, I will not give away, but uh, it, it brings us all together in such a fantastic way and such incredible beauty that we are just so proud to be showing it for opening night. Um, I'd like to say a little bit about the rest of the festival too. Uh, Doc Pitch is open, I believe, for voting. Uh, we gave away nearly $450,000 uh, since we started this in Doc Pitch in uh, 2017. And the most important part is you have a chance to choose the winners and where the money goes. So please take advantage of that and Doc Talk and everything that our incredible programming team has put together. And speaking of the programming team, it is my great honor and privilege to introduce my colleague, colleague Joni Cooper, the Director of Programming of Docklands. Thanks a lot. And welcome, everybody. Welcome back to the Rafael Theater. I'm so happy to see everybody here and that we get to welcome filmmakers back, too. So that is so thrilling. Um, yeah, exactly. Um, when I first saw Savage Waters, I knew that it was just the quintessential great outdoors, Docklands film. You know, it's full of adventure, it's cinematic, and there's lots of laughs, and it's so adventurous. And I just thought, this is one film that I think our audiences will like as well. And I was thrilled when producer Gislaine Cuvier and director Mikey Corky, Corky, Mikey Corker, agreed to have their world premiere here with us at Docklands. It gives us great pleasure to, to present it. I also wanted to say that we've got a special treat for you. Just before the film tonight, we get to be among the first audiences to see the music video that was written, well, the first bit of the soundtrack through music video that's done by a duo Ava Waves, and we've got 
one half of Ava Wave is here. Ash Brower, do you want to take a take a bow? Where are you, Ash? There she is. So we're. It's just gorgeous music, and and as they, Mikey and Gislan has have told me, is they were just perfect. They looked a long time for a score, and this is just a beautiful score. So I would also like to um, welcome a lot of the cast and crew tonight, and so please stick around after the film because they'll be back. And I know Mikey is a little bit nervous tonight, just as just as I am too. Because uh, he's introducing his baby to the world, starting right here at Dockland. So, Mikey, why don't you come on up and tell us? Thank you. Congrats. Hey, everybody. Um, well, this is a huge moment for us um, uh, in this uh, in this film, and I just want to say a few words. Um, I'm sorry, I'm really nervous <laughs> right now. Um, this is actually my first uh, feature-length documentary, and um, to be honest, I didn't realize making a film would be so hard. <laughs> so um, it's quite a miracle this exists. It was a passion project that, we, that I've, I've been working on for about seven years. So um, yeah, it's a miracle we're actually here tonight. <laughs> um, I just want to give a massive thank you to you guys, uh, Joni, Mark, and Aaron, and everyone here at Docklands for making this happen, and for you guys for the birth of our baby. Um, it's like our love child. <laughs> so, uh, it's a, it, this is a really special moment for us um, as the filmmakers um, and to share it with you guys feels extra, extra special. So thank you very much. Great. Enjoy. Wasn't I right? Wasn't that just a beautiful adventure family film? And the one word I left out when I talked about quintessential Docklands films was inspirational. What a joy, what a joy. Um, can I get Mikey and Taz and Ed to come on up now? Congratulations, you guys, being here for your, your premiere. Thanks for coming all this way. Yeah, Have a chair. Well done. Ah, first time I'd seen the film. What do you think? So yeah, thanks for coming all the way. And these guys went out for a quick surf this afternoon, didn't you? Uh, this morning, yeah. This morning, yeah. It was yeah. great. Yeah. Well, up in uh, Point Arena. Point, uh, point, po point Arena. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, near in Mendocino. Yeah, it was yeah. great. Great, 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 <laughs> great. Well, that's that is so great. And so one of the obvious questions that pops up is, is we saw where, this, where the inspiration for the, for the journey came from, but how did you all get together to um, make it happen? Um, well, um, I've known the Knight family for quite a while before this project, and it was actually while we were shooting something else. <laughs> well, we, were, we were on another adventure um, on the boat, and Matt had, had mentioned the, the book, and so we just had time then to sort of start hatching a plan. So, um, yeah, I think it was like many sort of nights sitting around the boat, looking at maps, kind of brainstorming and, you know, getting all excited. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it was like way back in like 2014 or 2015 or something. Yeah, it was about then, 20, yeah, around 2015. And so you were all on board right from the start, literally on board. Well, t t I mean, not really, because when we started, Taz was actually recovering from a knee injury, I think, skateboarding, was it? <laughs> <laughs> um, so Taz, so Taz was, that's why Taz wasn't on the first trips. Right. And um, uh, I, was, I was at uni as well. So oh, okay. I was kind of, I was out <laughs> for a Taz couple was years. Out. <laughs> Taz was buried uh, under some physics books. Well, that's, th th I mean, that's worthwhile, too. <laughs> and so was it, was it, um, 
the story that drew you, Mikey, to this, the, the original plan for, for uh, the... the uh, no, nah, well, yes. I mean, it just seemed unbelievable. <laughs> and then when you get Matt, Matt's enthusiasm, like when you've got somebody like Matt, like sort of presenting you with this unbelievable story, and because it's Matt, it's like, you know, he, he's also thought it out. He's not just going, it's not just a wild idea when Matt says something, it's like, you know that there's like a lot of mechanics that have already happened in the back of his head. He's almost like plotted it out. Yeah. So when he starts getting excited, I was like, I was just drawn in because I was like, well, <laughs> sounds amazing. <laughs> Let's go. Easy to see how that happens, yeah. <laughs> and so when, um, like the first, the very first leg, was that when you took off for the salvages, or did you did you kind of do it piecemeal? Um, no, it kind of happened like it, it happened there. We 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 sort of went to Madeira. I mean, we just for the sake of condensing information in a film, we don't really get to see it. But we actually spent like a month in Madeira waiting for that weather window. So, um, which you know was quite nice to hang out in Madeira for a month, but um, and then we just waited for that that window. We we um, when we started, we gave ourselves uh, three months. Uh, at that point, like it was just it. I mean, it was just a purely a passion project, and so there was no money in the project. Uh, we just between um, Andrew, Matt, and myself, we we all sort of committed three months of time, and uh, and we just like let's just go out and see what we can do. We put some money into a kitty for expenses, and um, and so yeah, we had three months. Christmas, I can't remember the year, two sixteen or seventeen. That was our cutoff. Everybody had Christmas plans, so you know, I me remember just thinking, oh, we have to do something about Christmas. Yeah, well, and the thing too about a documentary, typically, you don't know exactly what the story is going to be, really. So it's hard to plan. But this story seemed to take a whole different different view, be, leaning away from adventure and more into family and more into, into what, what you can do together. Uh, th this isn't the film I set out to make. <laughs> that, that was my question. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I, I, like, I couldn't even have imagined what was going to happen, you know, and then when, you know, factoring in things like um, what happened to Andrew, what happened to Suzanne, you know, you can't plan that stuff. Um, so yeah, but uh, even even when we finished filming, I don't think we knew what the film was going to be like. You know, <laughs> it was like I think we we were just we ended up, you know, we went for salvages a couple of times. We had some fun waves, and then one day one evening we were sat in the boat and we were like, should we sail to Cape Verde? And I was like, yeah, all right. And then it was like, well, should we sail to the Azores? Yeah, right. And then we sort of yeah, and then it, we finished filming, I think, and then. We had all this stuff, and Mikey was like, oh, I don't really know what the story's going to be. <laughs> I don't remember saying that. <laughs> you said that to me. <laughs> oh, maybe I did. <laughs> well, we did have over 500 hours of footage. <laughs> oh, yeah, actually, I never knew what the story you was going to be. Two stories. <laughs> two stories. Four? Four. <laughs> Four. <laughs> well, and that's what editing does, right? You, as, especially for when you... When you extend your three-month story into how many years? A decade uh, almost. Yeah, well, we finished shooting last year, I think, 216 to, I don't know, I've lost track of numbers. It's five, six, seven. Yeah, yeah. And so you take a look at the footage and you you decide what what's in and what's out. And Yeah, I think, um, well, we had a really good editor come on board, Jordan Montminy, and um, like, I, I think, you know, editing is a bit of a dark art. And it's just amazing, like, uh, because this was my first feature-length documentary. I think you have to approach it in a very different way, and it's all about structure and story. We also um, somebody came aboard a guy by the name of Nick Guttridge, a story consultant. And between um, Nick and Jordan and myself, I mean, I could actually just sit back, and because these guys are super experienced, and the way they could dissect through, because the challenge for a filmer who shoots, and I know these guys, I've got a personal relationship with them, so like I shoot and, and I'm attached to everything and it gets really hard in the edit because you want to use everything and so to get people that don't know them, they can be like ruthless and you need that because you've got 500 hours of footage to hack down, so 
So they were um, really helpful in sort of finding the story. Yeah. From my perspective, Mikey's um, overview of that, though, that's the first time I've actually seen the movie, but if Mikey said he handed the reins of editing to those guys, I'm sure you must have had some kind of input because you've captured every one of the nights absolutely to a T. Oh, uh, uh, cool. That's good to hear. <laughs> and what a family that is. What a, what a way to grow up, Taz. I mean, with such a close-knit family and getting everybody into activities. Yeah, um, uh, we had an amazing childhood. We were super lucky. Um, uh, Mum and Dad always just had a spark for adventure and they just always wanted us to appreciate life and live life to the full and they just always wanted to give us every opportunity to do that. So, yeah, it was, yeah. It was an amazing time. Um, yeah, lucky indeed. Still is. Yeah. C yes. Can I ask Taz a question? Taz, so, how did you get your name? Uh, <laughs> This is, a, this is a joke because they, I think this has been an ongoing thing. I don't know. Everyone always asks me how I got my name. And, it's just, and I think, Mikey, you always get people to tell He loves the story. The story is a funny story. Um, at the start of the movie, you see mum and dad sailing off in the boat Noel. Um, and my sister's middle name, Peony, her middle name is Noel after the boat. Um, and they sailed off around the world and then came back, had my two oldest sisters, Jemima and Harriet, and then went back out to keep sailing and got pregnant with me halfway around the world. And while they were crossing between New Zealand and Australia, they hit a big storm and was quite heavily pregnant. There was a lot of um, prayers to the sea god um, <laughs> and the sea's name Tasman. Um, so the promise was if they survived that they would name me after the sea. After the Tasman <laughs> god. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's why I think Taz is so comfortable on uh, rocking boats, because he's just, it's, it's in his DNA. Exactly, exactly. Well, with all that footage, was there, like, anything that you left behind that you really didn't, like... You I can't talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> I understand. It's really traumatic. Yeah. There's, like, six films I've left behind. How about a series? Yeah, no. Well, we do. I do have ideas about that, but yeah, there's so much left behind. There's so much. It's just, yeah. You have to be. Well, there's people that were hired to be brutal hitmen. Yeah. <laughs> footage hitmen. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, but like, you know, we we'd all love to see the footage, especially like being part of the project. And when when we were filming on the boat, we couldn't see anything that was filmed because it all goes straight into, you know, lock boxes because things get lost at sea so easily. Right. So, um, I, I've got all these memories of amazing different things that we did and all these amazing memories that I have and I, I want to see all of that stuff. Yeah. But there's just so much it was endless. It was years and years of amazing adventures. So. Yeah. The, I guess the sort of tough thing for me in a way was um, my sort of, a lot of my background has been more like full surf action focused um, films. So trying to find a balance in this which didn't have too much action because I don't feel like our audience just wants action. So we've got so much amazing action footage that I was like, oh, we want to use all this, but it's actually, it doesn't really serve the story. What's everyone's thoughts? Like, was there too much surfing or too little surfing? <laughs> oh, yeah? Ah. Cool. <laughs> Because, um, yeah, that's, that's the tough one, I think. Like, uh, you want to put in loads of cool action. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, me, me and Mike have worked on a number of films, three, two or three or four. Yeah. Not just short ones, but they're all just like, you know, full surf action the whole way through. Yeah. And me and Ed have done a few little things together, and they're always just like full surf action. So it's weird doing something that isn't just about <laughs> surfing. Right. <laughs> well, there's plenty of room for both, I think. And it sounds like you've got enough footage to do. Yeah, there's 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 well. so much, and I, you know I want to look at it. We had we had sessions that we talk about now. We just like whoa, that was just magical. We you know we lucked into a few amazing sessions. We've got such good footage yeah. from all the different locations. So yeah. It needs to find a life in some format. Yeah. Well, and I just have to say, Suzanne really is a star. She's a rock star. To not only to support all of that in, in such a way, but to go through what she went through and just to, to in, 
as still as supporting everybody else. It's simply amazing, yeah. And she's doing well now. She, yeah, she's great. She actually just had another scan recently. She, you know, she's it's no evidence of disease for uh, a lot of years now. So we're all really grateful. Great. And yeah, it's amazing. And you know, she's an incredible room, a woman. She's like an amazing artist. She's done, you know. Gymna she was a gymnast as a youngster and now is an amazing sailor and always doing amazing things and she's yeah. always she's the like life a mum to everyone. She's <laughs> life yeah. mum Four to kids everyone. weren't enough, so like she everyone that's surrounded by Suzanne feels like they she's their mother too. And now she's a grandmother, isn't she? Yeah. Just my, just just recently, yeah, like a month ago or something. I can't <laughs> remember, but yeah. New yeah. little baby in the family, baby Rowan. <laughs> One reason why they're not here is they couldn't tear themselves away, I think. <laughs> um, does anybody have a question out there that they would love to ask? Sure. Um, I'm curious, the, uh, the narrative that, that played through, did you modify that at all from the, from the book? No. I'll just, I'll just repeat the question. The narrative go that goes through it, did you modify it at all? No, not at all. All, the, all that, all those lines are in the book. Did Did you pick up on the um, when they were leaving Nazare and he was talking about the four paid hands and one of them was Arthur Cotton? How crazy is that? <laughs> it's so crazy. I almost left it out because I thought that's going to people are going to just just like not believe anything. But how nuts! A knight and a cotton. I mean, <laughs> yeah, and the book, the book by a knight with a cotton. In. Yeah, he's first. He's paid. He's like first mate. Yeah, yeah. And, and that <laughs> that original cotton got um, fired from the original trip for drinking. And there's a really funny passage. We couldn't put it in because it didn't really have a place. But uh, if not found this guy drunk, he'd been drinking the ship's rum, and if not punched him on the nose to discipline him. But it was like in that old speech, like. You know, he was insubordinate, so I had to give him a good hard punch on the nose yeah. <laughs> for getting into the ship's rum. Oh, it's hilarious. But there, there were so many different parts in the book that just fit so well with the storyline. Like, it's, it is. It's it amazing. was uncanny. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, you know, I have to give credit to Jordan, our editor. He really like went through that book with a fine tooth comb. I, I, our original, well, my original intention wasn't to use the book right through. We were going to sort of use it in the beginning and then sort of let it fall, fall away. But Jordan kind of went through it with a fine tooth comb. He kind of pitched it to me, you know, like, hey, like, look, at, I think this can work. So it became quite a good device to kind of bridge scenes and push things along and things like that. So I think yeah. it works pretty well. Fabulous. Yes. Your, your drone footage was crazy. And I, I just got back from Cornwall. I absolutely love the stuff on the world. For our first time there. And we were flying drones off those cliffs, and every time it went over the water, I was biting my nails thinking, is it ever going to come back? You must have lost it. How many did you? Four. The, the question was how many drones were lost, and he was very impressed with the drone footage. You lost four. Four. Ed, Ed can tell you about the litter picker. Yeah, there was um, a, f a few hairy moments, because obviously you don't want to get your hands caught up and in a bit of a... Um, rocky swell on the boat, it's quite hard to actually land the drone. So um, a couple of times me and Taz would have a litter picker and <laughs> we'd kind of be one either end trying to, um, to grab it to get the drone back. And we, we actually had a 100% success rate with that technique. So I don't know what Mikey was doing. <laughs> we, we, definitely, we definitely got better at it. But like, you know, the, the drone's hovering and the boat's going up and down waves, six foot. So, you know, you start, you know, 12 foot below the drone and then you go over a wave and the drone comes flying at your face, you know. <laughs> yeah. I, I once knocked out the, what's the thing that measures the wind speed and the direction? Okay. Yeah. Actually, Paris, you were just talking about that the other day and we couldn't remember. There's something that spins on the top of the mast. Yeah. It looks like three egg cups yeah. and it measures the wind speed and, dire wind speed and direction and I, I knocked it out with the drone. <laughs> And it nearly took out Suzanne, who was on the deck. The, like the drone came clattering down, this thing. It, oh, it was a nightmare. Crazy. Any other burning questions? There's one, yeah. I really enjoy Yeah. 
era, and I just loved seeing um, each of the different locations really filmed. She, she loved the underwater footage and the overwater footage as well as all the drone shots. Yeah, it was gorgeous, especially when you went both ways in one shot. That's my favorite kind of footage to get. So I, I love shooting water footage. And, uh, the, so, and that was a mixture. Um, I shot quite a bit of that, but other, some other people shot a little bit at times. And there was one shot uh, that was shot by somebody with scuba tanks, which was a, like a shot of the boat um, when it was sailing over. But um, yeah, the water stuff, especially in the Atlantic when it's super clear, it looks amazing. I know one of my favorite shots in the movie is um, towards the end when we were in the Azores, there's a shot of me pig dogging a left, and you come, I'm in the barrel, and then you drop underwater, and you see me riding through the wave, and then the fish all coming up under. That's one of my favorite too. Yeah. That's gorgeous. Oh, and yours, a I lot never, of ours. I never knew there were fish there until afterwards and I looked at the footage. Oh, of course not. Well, I wanted to say thanks again for coming and being here with us, and hopefully you'll stay and take in some other films, but really, really was an honor for us to present your world premiere, and lots more to come from this point. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. I uh, just want to say one more time, um, I'm so, so happy and uh, feel so privileged um, to be uh, with you guys tonight presenting this film for its first outing. So thank you so much.